Happy 5783. So this is the year that we just came into. We're coming into. This is the Feast of Trumpets. I just wanted to acknowledge it because by confirmation, the Lord was bringing me to Matthew 24, where it says, we know not the day nor the hour. You don't know the day or the hour because the Feast of Trumpets is Feast of Trumpets being the prophetic revelation of the last trump, Jesus' return, Jesus coming to meet us in the air, is on the holiday, on the very feast day. It's on the very feast day because all of these major things that he did were on his feast days. The different feasts were things that he accomplished. So the first four feasts have been prophesied through the feasts and they were accomplished. And then the last three feasts are still yet to be done. So the th last three feasts represent his catching the church up to meet him in the air, then the, the going to the wedding supper, and then the last one is the, the tabernacles being. We tabernacle with Jesus back on earth. We come back with Jesus and we, we rule and reign with him in the millennial reign. So we are with him in the in the new Jerusalem in ruling and reigning over the earth when we come back so the what people call the rapture is first and then the day of atonement at the return that's the judgment on the earth and then the tabernacling is the final thing so the trumpets is now and it's within a two-day period so it depends on the sliver of the moon which where the the actual feast day each year where the feast day is recognized. So it's that's why it's over two days because they don't know where when the sliver of the new moon is going to show, which day it's going to be over, through the night. So is it going to be before midnight or after midnight? And that's why he also says to be watching during the watches. And when he names the watches in the Bible, he names the night watches because it's the night watch because we it's about the moon that would tell us which particular time that he's coming, which particular day he's coming. But we won't know until that that first sliver of the moon. So the day and the hour, we don't know. But the season, Jesus said, you know, we know that we can know the times and seasons. We can know the time. And so the time prophetically is very clear of his fulfillments are on his feast days. And so this is a feast. This is a time... Literally, you can study, through, just do a search for Feast of Trumpets or Feast Day Revelation. It's trumpets that Jesus returns on. And then also it's at the end of the church age, which isn't until the end of the 2000 years of the church age. So Jesus died in year 30. And so 2000 years plus year 30 is uh, 2030. And so we have a few more years still before the rapture of the church. I really highly encourage you to watch that because it just keeps you out of the deceptions that are all over the place. And you can just focus on winning souls and doing your ministry, knowing that he's not coming back this second. There are things that have to come in place first. And of course, you already know that there has to be a great apostasy, a fall away of the church where we're going to see major pastors renouncing their faith. We're going to see the church speaking out against Christianity. That's the apostasy. We're going to see a hatred, a major shift, a U-turn of a lot of people that were leaders in the church that are going to be speaking. So that's the apostasy. We're going to see not just a the lukewarm oh, I kind of fell away into sin, not that. It's going to be a major apostasy that we're going to see. And then the man of sin, man of perdition, has to be revealed. The Antichrist has to be revealed, and he goes into power. And that, so the catching up happens after that, after the, that tribulation period. Yeah, where God's going to hide us. So I'm mentioning that because now is a time for those of us that know the timeline not having to know the exact day and hour, but knowing the time of the church age that we're in, that we can really just rest and focus and really celebrate the Lord for 
this being the time and looking forward to this being the time one one of these years coming after the church age ends we're going to be hidden somewhere all of us that are still alive i pray that we all are and we're going to be hidden somewhere by god and we're going to be separate from the world we're going to have been hunted we're going to have survived quite a bit and we will be in a position where we're just waiting for the lord and and when this time comes around we're going to know it's this feast it's this feast day that he's going to fulfill so i just really feel that strong in my spirit to share that with you i know some of you have done a little study on the feast of trumpets and maybe have been watching the pastor that we collaborate with on this channel but also you know maybe you've you've come to some revelation yourself and maybe you've also gotten away from some things you used to believe and have come to to really realize the knowing the word is really important so you've been in the word so i was just led to come on here and celebrate with you as we're in the start of our 40 days of worship that we are especially grateful today in this next day that we can especially be thankful for his coming back. I wanted to, aside from that, I wanted to say a quick, and I'll just mention it now because it's not really complicated, but some of his people he's assigning to be an administrator of his work. So the word that I got uh, a while back was Strong's Concordance 2012. It's epitropos, which means administrator. And it's one having authority. It's a steward or a guardian. So one of the major moves he's doing is getting us to this next level. Is he's he has been preparing us for this level of authority that we're going to have to guard, to be steward of something, or to be guardian of something, to be an administrator of something. And you may have been, or you may have been uh, training for that. And so it will be a different level. It will be a new role. It will be maybe a new thing that you're guarding. Maybe it'll be the same type of avenue in ministry or in your work or in your family, but maybe he'll you'll be doing it in a bit of a different way and coming with that word. So we have administrator and authority and steward and guardian. And then he also gave me tutelage yesterday. So that means the act of guarding or protecting guardianship, protection, and it can be under the care of a guardian as well. So tutelage can be like a tutor, an instructor. That's where the word tuition comes from, people having somebody teaching them, privately teaching them, tutoring them, being their professor, them being in safe hands, them being under a warden, under a coaching relationship, a lot of different ways it's described, like I said, guardianship, fellowship, and it implies safety. So there's something that you're going to be safe to people where they will come under your tutelage maybe to learn from you. So you may be having been prepared to mentor in a way, you may be raising your children in a new way that you're endowing more godly practices in their life like for example if you have a young child that's coming into an age where they can handle more mature themes around prayer for example so maybe they've learned certain types of prayers when they were really little and maybe they're coming into an age where they can start to understand a concept of spiritual warfare and they can learn about they can be taught about spirits and they can be taught about dreams and so that kind of thing is where they they're under your tutelage of helping them mature in their faith so whatever the lord leads you to people will see you as a guardian people will see you as safe people will see you as someone that has the the knowledge and the wisdom that they're looking for and so you can look for that change in your life. I just asked the Lord if you would show if you would have anything else to say about that. Edification is another word, and, and ministry is also uh, a word. Another word that came up is 
apostle as well. So sometimes it may even be with the Lord revealing to you. I think I was talking to someone the other day and the Lord was revealing to them something that was uniquely a message for them to bring to, you know, to, to go into study and start to really get to know that specific subject because I was getting a sense that that person was being called into having a really good root of an understanding of something that a lot of people didn't weren't talking about in the churches that the Lord was speaking to them personally about. So that kind of thing might be happening to you or the Lord speaking to you on a specific subject that you think, wow, this is really missing from the ministries. Uh, so he's going to have you, he's going to call you maybe under his tutelage, under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit to come in to be an understudy of God, to really put yourself in a schooling relationship with him and to dive really deep into being the one that he is telling about these things and taking that responsibility on to know that if he's speaking to you about it, those are the kinds of things that now in this day we realize it's you that he's speaking to about it. So to really take that on and, and own that and take that into your, um, your prayer with him and to ask him to strengthen you for that study and, and to give you the wisdom to understand what it is that he's saying and to carve out the time and the space that you need to do that study. Um, so I'm just excited for you all. And I just pray that you have this, I'm just seeing this, and I have been in dreams seeing this tunnel that's been like a dark, thin, narrow tunnel that the people of God have been passing through. And at the end of that tunnel, there's this little red carpet area that's just a welcoming area. It's it's where you get your ticket to go into the ball. So I just really feel like we've come out like this holiday, particularly this new year, this trumpets is an end of the passageway. And I just pray that over your life that you're coming into this little red carpet area where now you get your tickets and you begin to it, like in the dream, it was you get to pick out your garment and you get to decide what you want, what drink you want to carry with you into the ball and you get to go in and you get to just have your dance. It's your night to ex experience. So let it be that in Jesus name. I just pray that things really open up for you and it's a blessed uh, adventure, whatever it is he's bringing you into. So we'll see you in another video. Okay, take care. Love you guys. Bye for now.